So today we have a very anticipated episode. I've done a lot of research for today's topic, and that is with crypto gaming projects. So today we'll be discussing my top five crypto gaming projects on my personal wa watch list. Uh, gaming and metaverse has always have this um, kind of very controversial take in the entire crypto space. They had this dramatic rise and fall in the last bull market. However, in the long term, I still believe gaming and uh, NFT game assets tokenization is one of the most practical use cases of blockchain. Just imagine you have this interconnected ecosystem where every game asset, every token, every point system, every achievement is interoperable. Let's say you have Steam and every game you play, all the uh, achievement earnings, you can spend that currency in any other game and uh, just CSGO skins, for example, uh, that unlocks such a big marketplace with the financialization. And people already are betting on those skins uh, on off-chain markets. So I think definitely don't write off this sector as they are poised to make a comeback in the next cycle when the technology is right and when the uh, adoption curve actually catches up so that the traditional gamers won't think that NFTs and tokenization is just a scam. So, okay. Before we get into it, if you're new here to the channel, welcome. My name is Dennis. I'm a crypto angel investor and for the past five years, and I have invested in over 100 crypto startups. On this channel, I share my views on market trends and invest investing strategy to build wealth in crypto. So uh, when it comes to crypto gaming projects, there is really a differentiation between how you can invest in this space because uh, on one side, you have the individual crypto games, and on the other hand, you have the blockchain gaming infrastructure projects. Now, uh, because a lot of the uh, crypto gaming industry will inevitably, inevitably grow in the years to come. However, it's hard to capture that growth by just trying to find one or two really breakout games that will survive while the hundreds of other games will all die in this process. Now, this is a very uh, typical process that happens to game development in general. So uh, let me just play you something in the background while uh, we get into this part. So here, uh, this is... If you guys watch, you know, uh, traditional Twitch gamers at all, this is Myth, one of the most well-known uh, game streamers, and he's actually a big advisor in one of the upcoming uh, crypto games called Shrapnel. So this is um, very established, you know, web uh, AAA level FPS game. But in order to build any of these real AAA games that you can actually judge with uh, player experience, with how fun the game is. It takes five plus years in development time and oftentimes 30 to $40 million in funding. So the crypto market, on the other hand, the investors are simply not used to these types of money profiles and the time frames to make these games. As uh, usually they're um, more interested in DeFi and even layer one projects, and they take maybe six months to two years max to fully release to the market. So inevitably, uh, there's kind of this dis disconnect, this paradox. Uh, and that's why you see crypto bull markets only last around four years at a time, and the gaming projects really cannot uh, be released in that short period of time. And that's why uh, I like to bet on crypto infrastructure projects, uh, crypto gaming infrastructure projects for investment instead of picking out individual crypto games. Now, that's not to say this adoption won't happen. I'm sure there will be a handful of standout games that will take crypto by storm and even trad traditional gaming market by storm. I think Shrapnel is a really good example. Uh, Dead Drop by um, Dr. Disrespect, that's a really big game coming up. Big Time that just released, they have a very well-established, well, well-working game that you can try out already. So there is a handful of them and we will cover all of them in a separate video uh, when I actually show the gameplay and actually judge those projects based on how fun the games are. But that's a separate discussion. Today, we will only be focusing on crypto gaming infrastructure projects and which, uh, gaming infrastructure projects actually have potential from a uh, 
crypto native investment perspective from tokenomics from you know their their catalyst events coming up etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, and ultimately i think both of these sectors will gain when crypto gaming comes back and especially for the infrastructure projects they are much easier and cheaper to maintain you can choose to build out new features and reach new partnerships in a bull market but in a bear market unlike a game where you have to constantly push out new content you don't need to spend tens of millions of dollars uh, when you just have this infrastructure project this layer one layer two project instead you can conserve your capital so that you can wait for the right moment in the next bull market and really start to push then this is what makes infrastructure projects much more resilient to survive the bear markets uh, than these lofty AAA games. And that's why they are honestly a little bit better to invest in in the bear market. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into my top tier list. So the first, uh, to start off this list, we have actually a whole category of projects that are highly similar. And that is with these layer one projects that are specifically targeted at gaming. So the most clear example we have is Engine Coin that everyone already heard of. This is the OG uh, layer one gaming blockchain, right? So to uh, actually give you a whole list. So not only uh, I don't think Engine is in particular anything exciting, anything stand out. So I'm going to give you actually my top five layer one blockchains all in this one basket. And I'll, I'll explain why. So these five coins, Engine, uh, Wax, Ronin, Ultra, and Wemix are all highly similar. They are super cheap and fast blockchains made for gaming so that developers can easily mint NFTs and their game assets for their games. Uh, and all with practically zero cost. Plus all of these ecosystems have readily available developer toolkits. Now, the reason I put these layer one blockchains at the bottom of this list to just get it out of the way is because, well, they aren't super attractive in the next wave of uh, crypto gaming. So a couple of things to consider. These layer one blockchains, they all use their proprietary technology, which means once any game integrate with these blockchains, they are tied down in their ecosystem. Thus, they cannot take advantage of the proven popular blockchains like Ethereum or even Polygon, any layer two uh, ecosystem these uh, networks cannot support. So you can see this effect playing out in real time. There are really no AAA games or large studios that are committed to building on these uh, five alternative layer ones for gaming. This makes sense. Uh, all the AAA level games will ultimately want to uh, use some future-proof technology. So Ethereum will always be their number one choice. Plus with the uh, advantages of layer twos nowadays, game studios can just choose to build on a layer two like Polygon or even Immutable X. And they have plenty of options uh, for that to plug into Ethereum indirectly versus building on a separate layer one blockchain. Despite all these downsides, however, uh, layer ones for gaming still have their major advantage. And that is, they usually have a very large treasury during the last bull market. So they can cut down on their operational costs to survive the bear markets. And this is why I still have these five projects on this list. Uh, I still believe most of these alternative gaming layer ones will survive the bear market and will remain in top 200 and some even top 100 coin rankings. And once the uh, next wave of crypto gaming comes back, these projects, they just have to remain in the same narrative and they will do well, simply because uh, they're in that same category. Now, looking at these five coins specifically a bit. So first we have Engine. Now, Engine's tokenomics looks quite good in the uh, in first glance. So they have very favorable token supply. Apparently, 1 billion out of the 1 billion max supply is already circulating. However, there is one major upgrade coming to Engine that you need to know, which is their uh, token migration. So they will be launching their own uh, matrix chain. I think that's what it's called. Uh, before, Engine was based on Ethereum, but they are launching as their separate layer one. And with this launch, 
they will actually be doing a migration of the engine token. So here you see the details uh, here. So the new engine blockchain will start with a supply of 1.75 billion engine tokens. And that's because not only is the engine token being migrated with a one-to-one -one ratio, but also there is the Affinity token, which is their separate project that they built on, on top of Polkadot, and the another 250 million extra tokens that they are just somehow printing out of thin air. So really, after this uh, migration goes live sometime maybe this year, the new engine token supply will be 1.75 billion, which means the uh, market cap by that point will be around, uh, what is that? That's $350 million instead of 213. So keep that in mind when you're investing in this. Now, uh, all in all, tokenomics wise, engine is still one of the best ones because it has been trading since well, forever since uh, 2017, which means all the tokens are already circulating. So that's engine. Very brief already. Everyone knows about this, so I'm not going to talk about it more. Uh, the next one on this list is uh, what's the other one? Wax, right? So Wax is another one that has really good tokenomics. Again, because it has been trading for a very long time since 2018. And you see out of the uh, 3.7 billion tokens uh, total supply, 3.3 billion is already circulating. So 90% of that is already circulating. Really good tokenomics. Now, do keep in mind, out of these five gaming layer ones, Ultra and Wax, so these two layer ones are actually very old infrastructure because these two chains are based on EOS. So they were actually uh, using kind of EOS as a parent network. And that's why their technology, I really wouldn't bet on any new games to integrate with them. So just, just keep that in mind. Now, uh, speaking of Ultra, so Ultra has the lowest valuation on today's list. It's only valued at $15 million in market cap. However, tokenomics wise, I don't know why it still has so much locked up. So. Uh, total supply is actually 1 billion and 35% of that is circulating at 350 million. So actually that's pretty weird considering that Ultra has been trading also since 2019. So that's four years of trading, but somehow still large amount of token is locked up. So I think that's quite weird and that's why I'm not a big fan of Ultra's token today. Uh, and lastly, the last two on this list are Ronin and Wemix. So really brief background, Ronin Chain is made by uh, Sky Mavis, which is the parent company behind Axie Infinity, the hugely popular play to earn game that kickstarted the whole wave. These guys also printed money in the bull market, and that's why they have a huge treasury that can keep the chain relevant and survive the bear market. Uh, in terms of tokenomics, Ronin also really quite uh, heavy unlocking schedule coming up. Out of 1 billion, only 25% that is circulating. So market cap wise, 100 million is pretty cheap. I would say, you know, Sky Mavis, they most likely will have more money than this uh, in their company treasury. But just keep this in mind, the tokenomics is not great looking for Ronin. And then the last one that I think is uh, worth mentioning is called WeMix. Now, you might not be so familiar with this one if you're in the North American market, but WeMix is actually made by uh, We Made. So, We Made, if you just Google that, so We Made is actually a publicly traded company in Korea. And uh, even if you haven't heard of this company before, you might have heard of their top game, which is called uh, Mirror. So Mirror, M-I-R. So they have um, Mirror M, uh, Mirror 1, 2, 3, 4, four versions. This is one of the oldest and most popular MMOs out there. And this is made by, this whole franchise is made by We Made. And that they are the parent company behind We Mix. Uh, a layer one blockchain based in Korea. And also another uh, very popular game is called Riders of Icarus, a uh, very popular MMO on Steam, also issued by the same parent company. So this is why I think this layer one is also worth mentioning because their parent company is very, very established. 
Now, uh, tokenomics wise, also not great. Only about 30% or so of the total supply circulating. Uh, one last thing to note for these five blockchains, uh, Engine, Wax, uh, I think technology wise, Wax and Ultra are not um, anything new. They're the oldest on this list because they're based on EOS. Engine, even though they're doing a new migration to their own chain, that blockchain is also not EVM compatible. So you cannot deploy Ethereum smart contracts on it. Another, I guess, major turnoff. Uh, but on that point, Ronin and WeMix are actually compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine. So I think those are kind of stronger points for these two uh, newcomers. So even though their tokenomics are a little bit worse, uh, they, their technology is kind of more next gen. Uh, so I think they could have pretty decent adoption in the next cycle. Okay, so that's uh, the top five layer one uh, blockchains for gaming. And I put all five here just in case you want to gain exposure to this category. So just split your portfolio into each one. I really don't have a strong opinion on which one is the best out of this list. Okay, so moving on from the layer one projects, the next sector that we want to talk about is actually uh, layer twos. So there really is just a couple layer twos worth mentioning out there. So I think by far the best gaming layer two is Immutable X IMX. This is the layer two for gaming that is also compatible with Ethereum. Now layer twos ultimately will dominate over layer ones in the next cycle because everything is kind of converging on top of Ethereum. And Immutable X, well, they are the original DK layer two uh, that's built on top of Ethereum to fully support gaming. So that's their niche since the very beginning. Uh, today, Immutable has two layer two solutions. So they have the Immutable X uh, layer two, which is built on top of Starkware. This has been running for about two and a half years. Uh, this is not a full-fledged smart contract blockchain. Instead, it doesn't support kind of DeFi applications. Uh, it only is a uh, layer two focused on trading NFT assets for games. Uh, but to complement that, more recently, they have also released their Immutable CK EVM. So this product is truly next gen because this is one of the only CK rollups uh, that's fully compatible with EVM on the market today, and it's targeted at gaming. So very, very good uh, positioning for them. Now, I actually have covered the entire uh, Immutable X ecosystem in my Layer 2 video, so you can go check that out on, on the channel, which Layer 2 cryptos have the best potential. Honestly, I think there are, uh, Immutable X is one of the top projects still in the Layer 2 space. So, um, very briefly, just want to mention, you know, why is Immutable X even worth considering? Now, I don't think... IMX has kind of real uh, Web2 game adoption. So if you're thinking about like new AAA games, chances are they're not going to be built on IMX in the foreseeable future. So all of the games that they have built so far are just crypto native games. So Aradina, Age of Zamoxis, these are all crypto native games. This is a crypto game, Bitverse, Battle Derby, Block Lords, you know, all crypto games. And then they have kind of a handful of uh, traditional Web2 game partnerships, but not games that are deployed on the network. So the most uh, obvious one is here with ESL. So even though Immutable has a partnership with ESL, uh, which is the leading esports league for uh, Counter Strike? They are not actually building any new games on top of Immutable. They are just simply partnering with each other and somehow like using this as a marketing kind of event. And that's all it is. So this is kind of one major knock I have for IMX. They are way ahead of the industry in terms of like how much they are well known and positioned as the gaming layer two for uh, Ethereum. But 
in terms of real adoption, they're really still missing it. Uh, they're just kind of building their own crypto native games that outside of crypto, nobody really plays and have Web2 partnerships, but no real uh, games or AAA games coming in. Uh, despite that, Immutable X, I think tokenomics wise is getting way better uh, versus the last bull market. So in the last bull market, the valuations were kind of way overhyped. I think it launched right around 800 million to even, sorry, 8 billion to $10 billion, which is super high. But today the IMX token sits at uh, under $700 million and the total supply out of circulating supply is uh, 1.2 billion out of 2 billion. So that's 60% uh, already circulating, which is looking quite good. Uh, so all in all, why do I think IMX is worth holding for the next cycle for gaming? Well, this is really just because they are very nimble. They're very flexible to be kind of positioned center stage as the layer two solution for gaming. So in the last cycle, right, Starkware was very popular because that they were the first to introduce layer, uh, ZK layer twos for Ethereum. And that's why Immutable X jumped on as the, one of the first layer twos built on there. And then this cycle around in 2022, 2023, ZK EVMs became a thing and Polygon was the first kind of solution provider. And that's why they very quickly also deployed a ZK EVM layer two using Polygon. So in the next cycle, since we know that layer twos will be the main adoption point for Ethereum, and there are only a handful of competitors in this area, uh, you have Polygon ZK with their uh, ZK stack, you have Optimism with their super chains and OP stack, uh, ZK Sync also announced their hyper chains, and don't forget Cosmos with their original app chains. So whichever type of layer two solution comes out on top, I think Immutable and IMX will still be there to use that solution and essentially plug right on top and say, okay, we are the winning layer two for gaming using this well-known technology that everyone is using now. So I think because they're so quick to pivot, I think it's really a, a good business kind of uh, to bet on to still have that narrative going for them uh, as the top gaming layer two in the next cycle. So that's why I think IMX is a decent bet in the gaming layer two adoption uh, for the next two to three years. Okay, so that's with IMX. Now, next project is also kind of a uh, gaming layer two, but you might not have heard of it because they're just going through the rebrand as a layer two. And this project is called Mirror Circle. Uh, the token name is MC, but they are very quickly will be rebranding to uh, to be called Beam. Now, Mirror Circle is uh, one of the projects that launched around the gaming guilds craze in the uh, in the play to earn kind of hype period. So when uh, this was when YGG was very popular, Axie Infinity was very popular. So Mirror Circle first launched as a gaming guild. Now, since then they have gone through multiple transitions. So they have a first uh, transition into an investment DAO that invests in uh, many different types of crypto games. And uh, they were doing token buybacks uh, using their treasury earnings. And more recently, Mirror Circle is uh, pivoting completely to be uh, a kind of app chain for gaming, and that is called Beam. So here, introducing Beam, a blockchain for gamers built and designed with gamers in mind. Now, this is not a brand new layer one like Engine, like Ronin, etc. Instead, uh, here, instead, Beam is actually a subnet that is built in collaboration with Avalanche. So you can think of it like a app chain built on top of Avalanche. Now, I know what you're thinking. Avalanche, who is using that, right? And subnet? you are building under Avalanche, how is that a good idea? So I'll give you why I think this is just the beginning of what Beam could be in the future. So really, uh, by building with Avalanche, uh, one of the strongest suits that Mirror Circle has been kind of delivering in the past two years in the bear market 
is that they have really good treasury management. So because they started off as this very transparent DAO treasury uh, that invests in games, they had to be very careful in maintaining their cash reserves. So you can see here over the past year since November 2021 to June 2023, their treasury kind of maintained right around that $100 million level, even though the market has gone down so much, and even though their token price has gone down so much. This is possible only because they like to take these very cheap but very good kind of risk to reward uh, initiatives for their token holders. And that's why I think this Beam blockchain launch uh, as a avalanche subnet is just one of the early initiatives that they're taking. Uh, so you can see here, let's just break down their valuation metrics with their treasury really quick. So right now uh, they have apparently $94 billion, uh, million dollars in their uh, company, in, sorry, in their DAO treasury reserves. And over the past year, they have earned $6 million with that. So their current market cap is at $166 million. So dividing that by, uh, where's the treasury again? Yeah, dividing that by 6 million, that gives you about a um, 10x PE ratio. Not 10x. Uh, 25x. P ratio. So that is on definitely the higher side now. Uh, I really wish these uh, P ratios can be updated. So the last update they had was July. So I think once the beam migration actually goes live, their earnings should go up quite a bit. This is because these guys are not dumb. So even though nobody is using Avalanche today, most likely they're getting a large grant, a large kind of partnership revenue share by starting with Avalanche as a subnet. So uh, why do I think this is actually a good sign that they are doing this initiative? So because they're not launching as a separate layer one and instead is launching as a subnet as a app chain on top of Avalanche. So what are some of the uh, other competitors to Avalanche subnets? So you have Polygon with their, uh, I think what is called super chains, but now it's actually called uh, uh, Polygon ZK Stack, that's their new name, right? And then you have OP Stack, which is OP Super Chains. You have uh, Cosmos App Chains, and then you have um, ZK Sync Hyper Chains. So technically speaking, Avalanche Subnets is just another name for App Chains or for Layer 2s. So by launching in this direction, Mirror Circle will be setting them up with this new brand that is essentially a layer two network that is EVM compatible and is currently based on Avalanche, but later on could very easily onboard their existing ecosystem to any other layer two or app chain solution on top of Ethereum. Because Avalanche is based on Ethereum, it's based on the EVM technology stack, it uses Solidity smart contracts. So that positioning already sets them up. And honestly, Yes, this, uh, I wish they have not taken a deal with Avalanche and instead have taken something more similar to a layer two deal in the beginning, such as Polygon, ZK Sync, or uh, even OP Stack. But chances are, I think this is more of a business move. And once this network launches on Avalanche, they most likely will want to kind of pivot to more solutions, uh, very similar to what we saw with Immutable X. They first launched on Starkware, and now they're doing Polygon. Later on, they might do OP. So I think Mirror Circle is also following the exact same trajectory. Okay, now, uh, where was I? Yeah, so ultimately, uh, after the MC token gets their full rebrand to be the Beam token, it will become this gaming layer two token that has a real treasury to support whichever type of technology they choose to deploy on in the next cycle. And this is very rare because it, as far as I know, actual layer twos that are live today uh, using EVM technology, there is, I think only three, I wanna say uh, Immutable X, the most well-known one, 
There's also Mirror Circle, which not a lot of people know that they're starting to pivot towards a layer two. And then I think there's uh, also Miria, but that network, uh, that project is really kind of set up for early VC investors. It's a node model, very similar to early days of Gal games. So I'm not too bullish on that one. So I think really the two gaming layer two competitors are only Immutable X and uh, Beam, which is Mirror Circle right now. And that's why I like Mirror Circle's positioning uh, really well. Now, uh, in just the last bit on their treasury as well. So these numbers, I don't think they have fully, you know, $94 million in their treasury that's fully liquid. But luckily, you can see all of these addresses on chain. So even in their latest treasury reserve uh, since June, so they claim they have $38 million in cash, $7 million in large cap, right? So you, know, you can actually track all of these. So down here, they have all of their uh, treasury wallets. So you can click into any of these and you see here, this is one of their treasury Ethereum wallets on Etherscan. And they have, uh, not including their own tokens of 8.6 million. So that's $34 million of, uh, essentially cash reserves, right? Completely liquid reserves that they can spend on whatever they want. And this is just their main treasury on Ethereum. So I think the cash numbers should match up. This is very believable that they have $38 million of cash in their reserves today, which means compare that number to other gaming infrastructure projects, that is very, very high. So uh, $38 million in cash reserves on chain that you can verify with a uh, market cap of $166 million. That is very, very good tokenomics. Uh, very good market cap to actual cash reserve ratio. So that's another bullish point that I have for Mirror Circle. Like with $38 million in their treasury, whatever they want to do in the next cycle, whether that's like a layer two based on ZK, layer two based on optimism, they can do that very easily. And that's uh, bear market things. That's uh, one of the things you really have to look at for bear market is how much money they still have left over. Okay. Moving on from, uh, from layer twos, from mirror circle, let's talk about the project that everyone already knows. And that is, uh, Gala. So Gala games is the project is the gaming project that everyone and their mother already have heard of, right? So I have historically been kind of bearish on Gala since uh, 2020, 2021, since the bull market, largely because Gala Games was very heavily overshield, in my opinion, and the tokenomics for Gala was honestly terrible, terrible in the last bull market because the inflation was very high and the initial circulating supply was very low. So. Um, however, today, I really think Gala is starting to turn around and we're going to really just dive deep in their tokenomics and see why this is the case. So really brief, if you're not familiar with Gala Games, they are a game store, a game publisher that's dedicated for Web3. So Gala Games is, uh, they're basically a, a game store very similar to Steam. So right away, you can see they have their kind of music uh, sector, they have their film sector, and they have a large ca list of games that's lit, uh, that's on their game store, all powered by the kind of Gala token and their uh, Gala ecosystem nodes, which help to not only run their kind of blockchain functionalities, but also curating their games. So that's the gist of it. Gala is a publisher, a game store for Web3 games. Now, uh, in the last bull market, let's just jump straight into their tokenomics. So in the last bull market, you most likely have heard of Gala Games, how their node model was very revolutionary, how, you know, you could just buy a Gala node and you just start earning money magically, passive income. Now, why was this bad? This was because it's very similar to a play to earn farming model in the 2021 bull market. So when you look at the market cap of Gala, so 
at its bull market peak in 2021, its market cap peaked at f over $5 billion. Now, this would be okay if uh, the total supply was all circulating. However, when you consider the price of Gala, so at the peak, the price of Gala was around 75 cents. So dividing $5 billion uh, by 75 cents, you have roughly 7 billion tokens of supply that was circulating at the bull market peak. Keep that in mind. And then when you look at the max supply of Gala in the bull market period, the max supply was actually 50 billion tokens. This means at the bull market peak, only, uh, how much of that is it? Only 14% of the total tokens were circulating. That's just not okay. That, that's, that's a crazy small amount of tokens that were circulating that was essentially over inflating the price of Gala at the bull market top. And that was the main reason why these uh, early node providers were earning a lot of money. Because very similar to Axie Infinity, how their token was very heavily, you know, propped up in price. And a lot of people jumped in thinking that yield was going to sustain themselves over a long period of time. Once they bought up all these nodes, uh, Gallup price quickly came down. And then uh, as the price comes down, because the rewards were denominated in Gala token itself, well, the yield percentages also came down and thus why, you know, it fed into this negative feedback loop. Uh, just to give you a little bit of number calculations. So in the bull market, people were buying these Gala nodes for 20 to 30K, but the projected ROI earnings was over 100% APR per year. That sounded crazy high, right? However, today, uh, one Gala node costs around 3.6 million Gala tokens. So uh, taking that and dividing uh, and times it by the 1.3 cents per Gala, that gives you around um, 50, no, not 50, $40,000 per node today. However, the actual earnings today at current price is only 350 Gala tokens per day, which equals to around uh, $5 per day or uh, how much is that? One one point eight k per year. <laughs> so think about that. So today, if you buy a Gala node, because the prices are so down, you spend forty thousand dollars and you earn one point eight k per year. That's only uh, like four percent. Right? Is my yeah? That's only four percent APR per year. That is even losing out to like USDC yield, uh, losing out to even bank deposits. That is not a great return. So this is why early days gala, even though so many people were shilling it, I think that was really, really a terrible time to invest in this because the tokenomics was so skewed uh, to against the token buyers. And the only way to profit from it was that uh, if you got into the nodes early and you could farm it. But that was the main reason why so many people were promoting it because, well, they got into the nodes early and they were farming high amounts of Gala and dumping on the market. Now, all that to say, actually, uh, the tokenomics has actually significantly, significantly changed. And today, the same kind of high inflation trap does not exist anymore. So let's look at tokenomics actually for today. So... <laughs> Here is the supply chart of Gala. So this looks very weird, right? Because in the bull market, essentially, there wasn't even a very accurate tracking of the supply of Gala. And you see, at, uh, throughout the bull market, the supply was basically flat at 7 billion. However, uh, for the past six months or so, they have finally started to track uh, the Gala token supply very transparently. And you see this inflation is pretty much rising very gradually. And now we know exactly how much Gala tokens is circulating, which at today is around 2. Uh, 25 billion tokens. 
So you can find this very clearly here on uh, CoinMarketCap as well. 25 billion tokens circulating out of 27 billion total supply. Now, just to make sure that this is accurate, I also cross-referenced it with the Gala tokenomics that was updated uh, just last month in September. So here you see, even though the max total supply of Gala is 50 billion, uh, in May of this year, the Gala team actually made a huge token burn where 20.9 billion tokens was burned from the total supply. So this means the total supply, the maximum supply available uh, in perpetuity is now 29.1 billion, right? So let's say uh, 30 billion total tokens that's ever possible, right? So 30 billion total supply is ever possible. Uh, and you can see also this uh, blog post that you can see all of the exact burn transactions that they have taken here. Now, keeping that in mind, let's continue to read this. Approximately 2 billion Gala tokens are currently held in the reserve by Gala Games team. Is this accurate? Well, we can also very easily tr track this on chain. So here you see, uh, this is Etherscan contract address for Gala. And opening that up, you can go to the holders, and you see right here, uh, Gala Games Reserve contract address, right? Their holdings is 2 billion, just over 2 billion tokens. So this matches this team supply also as well, approximately 2 billion. They even use approximately. So that is exactly correct. So now we know exactly how much tokens are coming to the market over the next two years. So let me give you the actual breakdown now. So the maximum supply for Gala is not 50 billion anymore because 21 billion has been burnt, which, uh, which means uh, 29 billion is the maximum supply uh, that can ever exist, right? 29 is the number. Now, currently, the total supply is 27 that has been minted. So out of that 27, 25 million billion is circulating in everyday holder in exchanges in tokens you can buy. And 2 billion is held by the team treasury as we can verify on Etherscan. So that means out of the 29 billion total tokens, right? We have 25 billion already circulating, 2 billion owned by the team, and then the other 2 billion is the only token inflation that will be distributed to the Gala node farmers until the year 2030. This is actually uh, because Gala has a uh, halving schedule that continue to decrease the Gala token rewards to the founder nodes. So that's the tokenomics. 29 billion total supply, 2 billion still owned by the team that they can unlock at any time, and 2 billion to be inflation uh, until 2030 in the next seven years. So to summarize that, Gala's token supply today is really good, right? You take 20, 25 divided by 29, that is 86% of the token uh, supply circulating, which is much, much better than the bull market levels. Uh, and the inflation is only 0.5% uh, per month, which is about 10% per year. No, not 10%, 5% per, uh, per year for the current year. And due to the halving events, next year, the, to uh, the token inflation will only be at 2.5% per year. So it's this year, 5%, next year, 2.5%, year after, 1.25%. So the inflation schedule for Gala is very, very small now. And team holding is only uh, 2 billion out of 29 billion, which is 6.8% of the total supply held by the team. Very, very small amount compared to other you know, large treasuries out there. So with 
those numbers in mind, I think it's very clear to say that the high inflation trap for Gala is now over. The Gala team holds 6.7% of the total supply. That is it. The node operators, well, they cannot dump on the markets anymore because they only get 5% of the uh, existing supply that's inflation over the next year, and then 2.5% on top of that, and then continue to half. So uh, this is why their earnings are is essentially non-existent now. <laughs> They're barely earning any money, which means they cannot dump. So considering those two aspects, uh, on this is really good for the investor's perspective because while well, the investors, they want as little token inflation coming onto the market as possible. So this is amazing news because the token now can freely grow in price without worrying about constant sell pressure. So that is why today, even though Gala prices down so much, even though, you know, recently there has been this FUD uh, with the Gala, you know, uh, token founders, you know, with their infighting, Right. There, there was this lawsuit where their co-founder was saying, hey, like you stole some some tokens, you misuse some of our tokens. Even though there's this FUD, I still believe Gala today is the best time to be uh, to invest in versus the past three years because the tokenomics has actually <laughs> actually changed. Uh, so, yeah, that's why on today's list. I'm putting Gala as my number two, you know, gaming coin that I'm very interested to invest in. Now, historically, I have always hated this coin for that tokenomics, but for that same reason, because the tokenomics has essentially completely reversed, I am now very bullish on it. Uh, so that's why, you know, very long segment on Gala, but hopefully you understood the exact calculations uh, that I dug into. Okay. Now, uh, before we I get into my top pick for crypto gaming projects, I want to give you also some uh, honorable mentions when it comes to crypto gaming projects that people think are pretty popular out there. But I'll give you why uh, reasons why I haven't mentioned them. So number one, uh, first one is Veracity, right? This coin is very popular. A lot of people want uh, like to shill it recently. Uh, its price has been doing pretty well in the bear market, right? It has even seen a breakout and kind of consolidating here. But Veracity, they used to be kind of a gaming coin, but today they have completely rebranded to be this kind of uh, advertising coin. So uh, when you look at their token, so their main thing is called VeraView Advertising Stack, uh, which is honestly not a gaming coin anymore. I think the closest thing that this resembles now is like Brave Browser and the basic attention token. So that's why I don't think Veracity should be mentioned as a gaming coin anymore. Uh, even though it's it's pretty popular today, I don't think it's a gaming coin anymore. Uh, another one people love to mention, this newer project called GameSwift. So this is a uh, essentially ecosystem of crypto native games. You know, it, they have the, their own studio. They have, I believe, their own, you know, blockchain as well that they have built. Yeah, they have their SDK, they have their studio, uh, they have their ID system. But all in all, this is yet another kind of gaming infrastructure project that only focuses on crypto native games, but doesn't have any real adoption from AAA uh, real games that uh everyday gamers like to play. So none of that is being built on this. Uh, so that's why I don't think this coin is worth mentioning. Uh, another one that is super popular, I know some of my fans in the uh, in the chats, they love to mention this coin called GFAL, Games for a Living. Uh, I'll give it, to, I'll give you this, right? Their coin price has been performing amazingly well this year. So it launched uh, back in March right around 0.5 cents and today it trades at 2.5 cents so it has done a 5x in how long is that seven months it has did really has done really well in price right so their marketing is clearly working however when you go on their their website really what is even this right there is they have some really weird games like elemental raiders like what is this this is 
clearly a copy paste game in like crypto native only and i doubt that there's any players for these games that they that they propose here diamond dreams like what is what is this this is just this is a very typical way that you know crypto native gaming projects like to market themselves they raise money they launch their token uh selling their token to raise money and then they either buy up some existing game studio that have no traction no players or they hire some you know outsource team to build some games that looks like they have this ecosystem but in reality these games have no players so that's essentially what gfell does uh they do it pretty well because their their price has been going up so i cannot complain if i had invested in this coin uh in that sense you know i like to do continue watching this and do ta on this but when it comes to actually uh calling this a gaming project I don't think so. I, I think that's very far-fetched. I think this is more of a gaming meme coin than anything. Uh, and the only thing that makes me interested in this is, well, their price doing well. That's it. Uh, another one worth mentioning, Vulcan Forged, one of the most popular uh, gaming projects in the last bull market that's often mentioned alongside Gala Games. Uh, their price just hasn't been able to recover. And in fact, it has been just trading sideways for over a year now. Honestly, I don't know what they're still working on today. I I, I think they had a little bit of hype uh, last month because they announced that they are building their own layer one blockchain called Elysium. But honestly, this wasn't too bullish for me because I have already covered why I'm not so bullish on alternative layer ones for gaming because they're closed ecosystems. So yeah, just thought I'd mention it something to watch but i don't think i don't think they're moving in a very uh very good direction for adoption i don't i don't think they're doing the right things today <coughs> okay a uh, couple more to mention magic uh treasure dow this is another one that's super popular uh in the bull market but price has just been like down only uh this is a very unique coin because this coin is very different from a, a traditional gaming sector. Uh, the narrative for Treasure is that they are a on-chain game studio and publisher. So if you are bullish on things like, you know, play to earn or even like on-chain gamified farming and hardcore, you know, collecting NFTs and how much tokens you can earn with your NFTs. If you're into that kind of stuff, this is the kind of this is the main project that would interest you however that space has completely died in my opinion the on-chain gaming space i'm not too bullish on that uh sector and that's why i didn't uh i didn't include it in this in this list and that's why i'm not holding it today uh one last one that's worth mentioning at echelon prime also very similar to treasure it's a uh it's the original token behind the uh, parallel card game so if you remember this uh, parallel tcg game they released a ton of nfts that had like super good earning potentials and you could earn the prime tokens while well, the prime token has been trading now and uh yeah this is another one of those projects that is really going ham in the on-chain gaming uh using nfts to farm certain game uh game tokens kind of narrative which i'm not too bullish on to be honest so worth mentioning but i don't have it in my portfolio today i think that sector is kind of dead okay so those are the honorable mentions so now let let me get into actually uh this is very long already but let me get into the number one crypto gaming project that i'm super excited about uh right now So I have covered this project before, and that is called Ready Games. Now, Ready Games is the most complete Web3 game development platform. It supports all the major blockchains and plugs right into your favorite game engine like Unity or Unreal. And all the games that you can develop on here directly goes into the app stores on iOS, Android, or any other. Uh, this was one of the main pain points that uh, traditional 
Web2 game developers had a hard time because once your game is Web3, it's very difficult to get it listed on the Apple iOS store. Well, if you go through Ready Games, you have no issue at all. So let me go through why I think Ready Games is the number one pick for Web3 gaming infrastructure project. So unlike 99% of the crypto gaming projects that we have mentioned today, uh, for example, you know, these gaming layer one blockchains, Ready Games is not building some useless layer one infrastructure that nobody uses, right? So many people already have heard of these and are tired of them. How many more layer ones do we need, right? Are there real players? Are there real games being built on here? Uh, well, for Ready Games, that is true because instead they focus on getting existing Web2 games and studios onboarded and converted to Web3. For instance, uh, they don't tie you down to a use to, to some uh, proprietary infrastructure, proprietary blockchain. So unlike Engine or WeMix or Ronin, whatever, they don't even offer their own layer two like Immutable X. Instead, when you onboard on the Ready Games platform, you can use any layer one or layer two out there. So you can use Ethereum. Uh, you can use Polygon, BNB Chain, Avalanche, or you can even use Solana or even Polkadot if you really wish to go that route, if you just really like those other blockchains. So it's really not opinionated. This is one of the top things I like about this project. Uh, from a real game developer perspective, I don't want to use your proprietary blockchain. I want to use Ethereum. And whoever can help me onboard to Ethereum, I'm going to love them. So this is the number one thing Ready Games has. Number two, Ready Games uses real player count as the key metric to track their success. This is practically unheard of in the crypto gaming space. Now, when you look at you know these other games that we have mentioned, these other projects, you know Game Swift, Vulcan Forge, Games for a Living, etc., all of these guys. 99% of these projects, well, they focus on selling their tokens and using that proceeds to get, you know, empty partnerships, uh, like, for example, with, uh, you know, with Immutable X, with their partnership with ESL. These are not real adoption. They get certain partnerships for marketing, but no ESL, no new players are coming into these ecosystems. It's just a marketing stunt. Uh, and even worse, so these other games, for example, like these type of ecosystems, they use their proceeds to build these kind of empty games that nobody has heard of, right? So this is the typical playbook for Web3 gaming. And that's the playbook that uh, has introduces these disconnects between the Web3 gaming world and the real gaming communities. Now, Ready Games take a completely different approach because they don't build their own games. They only focus on bringing established Web2 uh, ecosystems, Web2 publishers and Web2 studios into Web3. So get this, in the past year, they have already onboarded over 100 studios and publishers alone. So some of the notable games on their list, I'm just going to point you to their uh, onboards. Uh, very established studio called Simu Games. Now, Simu Games, uh, their flagship title is called Runestone Keeper. You can Google this yourself. So Runestone Keeper is an established game already published on Steam, and it has been released way back in 2015, selling out you know millions of copies, and it's a cross-platform play on Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, and even the Switch, right? So directly, this is a game that people already know and already play, and those same users will be onboarded to Ready Games using their technology, and on top of that, the in-game currency will now be based on the Ready Games token. Super cool, right? I, I cannot, honestly, I cannot believe any Web2 games. I have not heard of any two, any Web2 games that are going this route outside of uh, Ready Games ecosystem. Two other uh, examples I want to show you. Another one that has uh, partnered with Ready Games is called Area Games Canada. So these guys, 
uh, they built these mobile games that doesn't look the part on uh, on paper. It looks like you know uh, Roblox type games, but when you look at the actual stats, so this is the game that's being converted by Ready Games called Rescue Robots Sur Sniper Survival. Now that sounds pretty pretty dumb. I agree. But look at how many downloads actually there is. 5 million plus downloads on Google Play alone. And remember, this is a mobile game, right? 32.6K reviews, 4.2 stars, right? And if you look at other titles from Area Games Canada, this is their thing. This is, they focus on building Roblox style mobile games. And look at some of their top other games, 50 million downloads, 250K reviews. These are real games that people already play and love. And uh, and in fact, this is just their style. And this explains why it's this Roblox style. So these games are being onboarded to Ready Games. And again, they're using Ready Games uh, technology, but under the, under the hood, they are using Ethereum technology and they it's not being tied down into the ready games uh kind of silo but they still use the ready game token and the ready game assets super cool i have not heard of any other established web2 studios onboarding millions of downloads and hundreds of thousands of uh, monthly active players to a web2 ecosystem uh, web3 ecosystem lastly last one uh i actually dug into this and recently they have uh they went on to uh, demo in China Joy, a game conference in Shanghai. And you see here, one of the games that they have up and coming is called Zula. Now, Zula, by far, I think, is the most impressive on their partner list because this is a actually very popular game even today. So you can Google Zula, uh, this FT FPX game today. And this is live on Steam. You can go try this out. And if you look at the most popular FPS games by concurrent player count today on Steam. Zula uh, is, where is it? It's right here. So it's 183 rank by top most popular FPS games on Steam today. Right now, as we speak, 400 players are playing Zula FPS game uh, right now. So these players are all being onboarded to Web2, uh, Web3 two, Web using Ready and using Ready Games and their token and their assets. Give me one other Web3 Web infrastructure provider that's doing any sort of partnerships like this. You cannot. Uh, I'm telling you, this is this is crazy adoption that I have never seen outside of this project. And you can, you can track the real player counts on Steam, right? This is... Uh, I believe this is a very popular game in Turkey. It's kind of like the Counter-Strike for Turkey audience because they don't have uh, very heavy PC requirements. And you see, this game has been vastly popular since 2018. Hundreds, sometimes thousands of daily concurrent players. And they have a global version also that's been running since 2018. Hundreds of players per day, very consistent. So all in all, I, I only gave you three examples of games that are being onboarded to Ready and is using the Ready Games assets and their tokens. Uh, so this project really doesn't look like much from the overall branding because it's not as sexy as like Immutable X. It's not like, oh, we, we're building our layer two, you know, we're partnered with ESL. But when you look at real player count, consistent concurrent player count, nothing beats out this project by far. Uh, and that's why this project is my number one pick for gaming infrastructure uh, crypto projects in the market today. Uh, I have mentioned this project a few times, but this is the uh, most in-depth that I have gone in this ecosystem. Okay, one last mention uh, before we wrap up. So when you... Uh, Ready Games does have a token coming up called Ready X. Uh, the utility for this is also very interesting because as far as I can tell, all of the games that's being onboarded to this ecosystem will be using the ReadyX as their in-game currency. And in order to you know, purchase and mint and craft in-game items, in-game loot boxes, etc., that will be all powered by the ReadyX token. 
honestly, I have no idea how they convinced these all other Web2 games to use their own the ready token instead of their own token. I have no idea how they pull that off. But that is the ideal case. So the utility of this token is super clear. Uh, so that's why, yeah, I'm very excited about this as well. Uh, I don't think they have any like sale, you know, any uh, timeline on when this is released, but definitely pay attention to this. And if you want to follow along on their uh, progress, just follow their Twitter. I think they're, that's the best place to follow this project uh, on Twitter, ready.gg. Okay, uh, that's it. That's my number one pick for crypto gaming infrastructure project. And in fact, that's my top five picks. Um, I've given you basically like 15 projects now, but overall given you like five different sectors and why I think each sector is worth investing in. Uh, both from like real adoption standpoint, which coins have a real adoption and also which coins can survive the bear market and just continue to hang on as the uh, kind of alternative layer ones or layer twos dedicated for gaming, which I think those projects do have their space in the next hype wave. Uh, and last but not least, make sure to check out Ready Games. I think they are by far the only project that have real adoption, converting Web2 players to Web3. Check out all the games that I have mentioned for today um to see if they are real right just do the research by yourselves uh yeah thank you guys for joining if you like this content make sure to subscribe and smash the like button and share it with a friend if you know if you have, you have any anyone else interested in crypto gaming and if you know any projects that i haven't mentioned drop them down in the comments and maybe i'll do a part two later on and if you're interested in you know finding about uh other crypto games that are worth playing or not, well, look out for a separate uh, crypto game real first impressions video where I will actually show real gameplay. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, all the links you can find down in the description and make sure to follow me on VirtualBacon0x on Twitter and join our newsletter, Discord for free VIP trading signals, discord.gg slash virtualbacon. Or you can find all of it on virtualbacon zero x uh, virtualbacon.com. That's it. Uh, thank you guys for joining the live stream and watching the video. Cheers, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.